Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with the blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Favre Luba Raider Harpoon. I'm showing you two different versions of this watch. This is an interesting timepiece, uh, definitely a niche product. I found it to be very cool. The watch really needs to first begin with the way to read the time. It is extremely easy to misread how to do this. And I don't really blame the design um, because it is a very kind of original concept, but I do think that in future versions of watches that have this time telling mechanism, things can be done to draw a little bit more emphasis to the design. And I think that it's got enough potential that the company can expand this particular type of time telling system to all kinds of other different watches, especially ones in slightly smaller cases, because this is a big watch. It's I think it's 46 millimeters wide and it's steel and it's it's a big heavy watch and there's nothing wrong with that but um i just don't necessarily know that it needs to be so large but we'll get that to that in a second so how do we read the time here it's very easy to think that this little hand here when you're not if you're not seeing it moving now you can see this moving is the hour hand it's not that it's just a seconds hand and there's this little section here which is has these three cutouts which is designed to allow you to see it moving. It's a, uh, they would call it like sort of a oper operational indicator. The way to tell the time is useful, but a little bit backwards. So you have this disc or I guess this ring that has the hours on it. And that's the hour indicator. And then you have this hand with this little red square tip, which is the minute hand. And this is essentially how it works. I guess you could figure out where you want to put your eye. It takes a little bit getting used to, I have to admit. So the first thing you do, you have to find this hand and then you see to where it points. And it points to the minute indicator as well as the current hour. So when I adjust the time, you'll be able to see precisely how it works here. So watch the minute hand as well as the hour disc. As you can see, on each full rotation of the minute hand, it moves one full spot between an hour marker, between the hour markers. So here it's going slowly from 11 to 12 o'clock, right? So if I stopped right here, I would see it's at the 45 minute hour marker close to 12. That would mean it's 1145. Now it's 12, 1215, 1230, so the idea is that your eye only needs to travel to one spot in order to read the time, whereas on a traditional watch with an hour and minute hand, you would have to look at both spots. The problem is that most of us are used to reading the hour first and the minute, where we would say it's 1230. But here, because you have to look at the minute hand first, you see 30 and then 12, and then you have to do the calculation backwards in your head where you go from this to 1230. I don't know if after wearing this watch for a long period of time, you would become accustomed to it. Um, I wore it for a while and I was able to figure it out. I liked it. Um, probably need to wear it a little bit longer. As a dive watch, because this is a dive style watch, there might be advantages underwater because oftentimes you're really looking at the, the minute hand a lot more. And so I haven't taken this underwater, so that could all change, of course. But, you know, most of the time when people are wearing luxury dive watches, they're not spending a lot of time underwater with it. The system is great, like I said, and I think that they can continue to refine um, how it works and how it looks. Just the time um, on this model, maybe they'll add more complications later. I want to see a classic version of this. I think that'd be very pretty. Um, I just like to see the mix up of the design because this design is very specifically a, what I'll say is a 1970s style diver. So this case, which is kind of like an oblong cushion, like I said, this is the DLC coated steel version. This is what it would look like uh, in just steel. This actually happens to be on the bracelet. So you can see the slightly different color dial there. I'll put this one on. I haven't sized this bracelet. So you can see that on the wrist. That is a that is a rather large watch. It's like I said, about 46 millimeters wide, rather tall, water resistant to 500 meters, rotating bezel, 
Uh, aluminum insert, which is a little retro-ish. I prefer ceramic or something that's a little bit more durable. But again, if you're going for that 70s watch theme, this fits the bill. This is this does look like one of those quirky, large 70s divers. And there's a place for that, for sure. Uh, the bracelet is simple, but uh, effective. I do like it on the strap a little bit more, probably because for me, the watch is so large. Um, I'll put it on a second, show you the case back here, the little sticker is still on there. The movement begins with a Swiss Salida SW200, which has a module on top of it in order to accommodate this unique time selling, telling system. You might be asking yourself, why does it have two crowns? This crown down here is for winding the movement uh, it is an automatic, but you can also manually wound it, of course, as well as selecting the time. This is a manual helium release valve, so if you are a commercial diver and you need to spend time in a decompression chamber, uh, Favre Luba's got you covered. Again, I think that this one on this, it's almost like a, almost a burgundy. It's like a reddish brown strap with this contrast orange stitching. It looks pretty cool, I have to admit. I think it's a, it's a, pretty decent looking design. It's definitely distinctive, but you can see that for my wrists and for sort of normal daily wear, this is this is a bit on the large side. If you're a beefy guy that has, you know, rather large diameter wrists, then you're going to be totally fine. I I was born with smaller wrists, so I have to I have to use what I was given. So this is like I said something that is comfortable, but just based upon you can see on that side profile there, that's that's definitely especially with the lugs, they're coming off my wrist there. It's a little on the bigger side. Again, it's fun, but it's a little on the bigger side for me. But that's okay. Just wanted to sort of point that out. And most people who follow follow my reviews essentially know my wrist size. But I just sort of want to make that clear that I don't think the company needed to make the watch this big. Obviously, they're going for a style thing. And the reason I say that is it's entirely possible that something substantially similar to this could come out in the future in a smaller size. In fact, they make a case just like this uh, that doesn't have this unique time telling system, which is 44 millimeters wide, so not as big. Why they went up to 46, I don't necessarily know for sure, but they did. So again, this is the Favre Luda, Favre Luba Raider Harpoon. It comes in many different versions because there is a mixture of this uh, orange and black dial as well as this blue dial. Um, and then you mix and match between the uh, natural steel and the black DLC, different strap options. There's a rubber strap in the bracelet. So between these, there's a bunch of different SKUs. The prices range from 4,450 Swiss francs, which would be steel on strap. The DLC one here, I'm sorry, it's PVD. I apologize, PVD coded one, it, not DLC, different type of coding technique. Well, it's a, anyways. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So encoded in black, it'd be 4,750 Swiss francs. And then on the bracelet, it's 4,950 Swiss francs. And you can see the full review on a blog to watch. Thanks.